Okay. Hello, welcome back to Cincy Junior Sabbath School Show. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together today. Thank you for allowing us to gather in your name this Sabbath. For those viewers that are watching in the future or now, allow them to understand everything that we say today for both lessons and for them to be able to share it with others. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So as a friendly reminder, like I said, in the next coming weeks, actually about one or two weeks, we'll be moving into a live setup setting where we'll be live on Saturdays at 3.30 p.m. Now I'll have the host introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Emmanuel Yaboa, and I'll be the host for PowerPoint. Hi, everyone. My name is Happiness Apoku, and I'll be your host for Cornerstone. I will now have the guests introduce themselves. I'm Jared, and I'll be participating in the Cornerstone discussion today. Hi, my name is Michelle, and I'll be participating in the PowerPoint discussion today. Thank you for joining us. If you don't have the PowerPoint book, you can go to www.juniorpowerpoints.org. And if you don't have the Cornerstone book, you can find it online at www.sabbathschoolpersonalministries.org or at Cornerstone Connections. The Bible verse of this week is found from Psalms 23, verse 1, and it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'll be going on to the PowerPoint. Um, this week, we're on Lesson 12. The title is Sneak Attack. The power text says, show proper respect to everyone. Love the family of believers. Fear God. Honor the emperor. 1 Peter 2, verse 17. Now I have Michelle give us a summary. Today's lesson is a continuation of last week's lesson about David and King Saul. David and his men are still hiding from King Saul. There were spies amongst David, and they, and they were telling King Saul where he was. A message from one of the spies said that David was hiding in the wilderness of En Gedi. Saul took 3,000 of his men to go capture David. David also received a message. He knew that King Saul was coming for him. Suddenly, the cave entrance got darker. A lone man entered. David's men, closest to the entrance of the cave, quickly passed the message down. Then another message was passed back up. The lone man was King Saul. David's men were telling David that he should kill him right there. But David knew that it was a horrible thing to hurt the king. David tried to see how close he could get to King Saul. Then he tore a piece of his robe. Then King Saul left the cave. David then turned around and he was even upset about tearing a piece of the king's robe. His men were confused because King Saul literally wanted to kill him. David ran to the entrance of the cave and asked the king why he believed the people that say David wants to kill him. David said, the Lord delivered you into my hand. My men told me to kill you, but I spared your life. He said he would never lay a finger on him. And then David showed the torn piece of the rope to him. King Saul was touched by what David did. King Saul knew that David was going to be the king. Then he asked David to be kind to his family, and David knew that he would never be cruel to anyone once he becomes king. And that's where the story ends. Thank you for your summary. Now we'll be moving on to questions. Why do you think the lesson is called Sneak Attack? I think the story is called Sneak Attack because of how David and his men were hiding, and they still had a chance to attack him right then and there. But David knew that it would be wrong to attack him, even though his men felt like he should have killed him right there. Uh, to add on to that, David, the way that he was able to sneak up on Saul, King Saul, and then tear a piece of his cloth without like him even realizing it. I also think that that's why the, it was, the story was also called Sneak Attack because he ne didn't necessarily attack him, but like he was able to tear a piece of his cloth without him realizing it. Um, have you ever gotten bullied or has anyone ever constantly picked on you? If so, did you try to get even with them? Yes, I have been bullied before, but at that time I wasn't, I was very timid and shy. So I couldn't speak up or confront them about what they were saying up to me and about me. Yeah, I was the same way um, when I got bullied. I didn't really want to say anything. And instead, like, they would say I'm the one bullying them. So then I would end up getting in trouble for not speaking out. Um, why did King Saul want to kill David? King Saul wanted to kill David because of David's relationship with God and how his men had a close relationship with him as well. He wanted to kill everyone like that because King Saul didn't have that relationship with God and he knew that because of that, he would be more powerful than him. 
to add on to that as well, um, King Saul knew that King David, uh, David was supposed to be king. So him knowing that he didn't want to be like taken off of his throne. So he wanted his family to be a continuation. But instead, he, since he knew that David was supposed to be king, he wanted to kill him. Um, why do you think David only cut a piece of King Saul's robe? What does it say about his character? I feel like David only cut a piece of his robe because of David's personality. Notice how in this story that David, David didn't really want to hurt him. He wanted to spare the king's life. He didn't want to lay a finger on him. David was a very forgiving person, which he gets that personality because of his relationship with God. Uh, to add on to that, I also think it was a sign to show King Saul that he was able to be able to like kill King Saul. But instead of his, because David had like a good heart and had a close relationship with God, as you were saying, he knew that that would be the wrong thing to do. Um, if you were in David's situation where you had the ability to ki kill King Saul, would you do it? Why or why not? I wouldn't be able to kill King Saul. I wouldn't be able to kill anyone, for a matter of fact. Because one, that is too traumatizing to hold that you murdered someone right in front of you and watched them die. I wouldn't kill him because killing someone is too traumatizing. I also feel like even killing someone because of because they did something horrible to you is also a bad thing. Just because someone hurt you or did something terrible to you, that doesn't mean they deserve death. No one deserves death. And I feel like everyone deserve, needs this type of mindset. Um, not gonna lie to you, I wouldn't want to kill King Saul, but like I would want to do something to him to make him feel bad for what he did because it's like I've been, I was unable to be have a relationship, uh, friendship with my friend Jonathan. King Saul tries to kill Jonathan, which is my, which would be my friend, and also I've been having to run and hide for such a long time just because I didn't want to get killed. But then also, like, because David in the situation, he had a strong relationship with God, he didn't want to kill him or do anything to him because two wrongs do not make a right. Um, do you think David should actually be kind to Saul's family after he becomes king? Why or why not? I think David should be kind to his family because of his relationship with God. David is really close to God, to, and to keep that relationship without feeling guilty, he should just do what pleases God. And I can guarantee you that it will please David himself and give him a sense of peace when he does forgive them and stays kind to his family. Lastly, what can we learn from this lesson? Something that we can learn from this lesson is that staying mad at someone and not forgiving them, you're stressing yourself out and you won't have peace. If you forgive them, you'll feel peace and it'll please God as well because God, God is very forgiving and we're being God-like. So learn to forgive people even when they do terrible things. To add on to that, I also think that we should never like seek revenge against others because they've done something onto us. I think we should honestly show them like respect and forgive them and just pray for them just as God would want us to do. Thank you for your responses, Michelle. Now, the answer to why Daniel fasted was to set himself apart for God. Now, this week's questionable lesson is, what are the four Gospels in the Bible? Type your answers in the comments down below. So, we are now on Cornerstone. We are also on Lesson 12, and the title is, God is in Control. The key text is found from Daniel 9, verse 19. I'm reading from the NIV version, and it says, Lord, listen. Lord, forgive. Lord, hear and act. For your sake, my God, do not delay, because your city and your people bear your name. Amen. So now Jir will give us a summary on lesson 12. Um, this week's lesson looks at another vision that Daniel had. Uh, in the vision, there was a goat and between his eyes, there was a prominent horn. Uh, this goat had great power until the height of its power where the horn fell and from it, four prominent horns were formed. Uh, one of the horns had started small but grew in power until it reached the hostess of heaven uh, it took away the daily sacrifice of the Lord and his sanctuary was thrown down because of rebellion. The Lord's people and the daily sacrifice were given over to it and it prospered in everything it did and the truth was laid to the ground.
Then Daniel heard a holy one speaking and another holy person speaking to the other holy man. And the person asked, how long will it take for the vision to be fulfilled? And the answer that was given was 2,300 evenings and mornings. Then after that, yet another man came and asked the angel Gabriel if he could give the interpretation of the vision, and he did. Uh, in the vision, the goat represented the king of Greece, and the horn that was between his eyes represented the wicked king. Um, in the latter part of the reign, when wickedness would abound and be great, the wicked king would arise and take over, and he would destroy the holy people. Uh, he would stand against the Prince of Pieces, but after a little while, his power would be taken away from him, but it wouldn't be by human hands. Uh, seeing all this, Daniel was exhausted and tired for several days, but after he went about his king's business, ending the summary for this week's lesson. Thank you, Jay, for your summary. Now into the discussion. How do you feel about visions? Uh, I think visions are powerful. Uh, visions can come from God. Uh, we can also have visions for our own lives. Uh, we can have dreams. Uh, visions from God are powerful. Uh, those visions help us see the secrets and ideas that God has for us, whether it's to warn us about the future or to give us answers that will help our daily lives and what we're going through currently. I agree. I think visions truly actually mean something and they should be taken seriously. Who was Gabriel? Uh, Gabriel was the angel in the lesson and in the lesson he gave the interpretation of the vision that Daniel had, including the power that the wicked king would have and uh, um, execute towards the holy people who would destroy them and also the power that God would have in him executing it and taking down the wicked king. What does this power reveal about Daniel? Uh, it reveals that he um, saw the vision as ominous and uh, unpleasant. Uh, it caused him to be exhausted and tired for several days, but yet he went up. He didn't let it um, bring him down. He didn't give up. He went about his king's business and he continued on with his life. How can we have peace when we know our future will be filled with trouble? Uh, trusting God and reading his word daily can allow us and remind us to know that we're not to fear, but we're to be strong and of good courage. Uh, just stay focused on God and not the world, and you will have your foundation of God uh, sturdy, and you won't become weary and give up. Okay. The last one is... What does this passage tell us about God? Um, it tells us that God has power as he would take away the power of the wicked king and that he will continue to be with us both now and forevermore. Yeah, like the title says, which is God is in control, God is in control, and we should continue to trust him in situations. Thank you, Jared, for your lovely responses. Now I have Stacy close it off for us. Okay, let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together today. Thank you for allowing us to talk about your word today. Please allow us as well as the viewers to take valuable information out and be able to apply it into our daily lives. Please allow us to be able to share these things with non-believers and believers in the faith so that they may draw closer and nearer to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So the question of the lesson again was, what was the four gospel books out of the Bible? Thank you all for tuning in for lesson 12. Please make sure to share the video with others and comment down below your answers to the question of the lesson. Hope to see you all next week.